Happy Halloween, everyone. But before we get started with this review, I just have to say one thing. Did y'all know that Evangeline Lilly was in this movie? Yeah, she's just in the background of the high school, doesn't have any lines, it's just a walk-on extra role. Never really noticed that until now. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel. This is my review for 2003's Freddy vs. Jason, which is the 8th Nightmare on Elm Street film and the 11th Friday the 13th movie. Now supposedly this movie takes place after Freddy's dead, the final nightmare, but when you watch the backstory of Freddy Krueger as it's played out in this movie, they show only snippets of Freddy's dead, nothing from Dream Child, and the only clips that they really show are from the first four movies. Movies, and they really do highlight Freddy's death in Freddy's Revenge, Dream Warriors, and Dream Master. So for me, I'm just gonna assume that it takes place after Alice Johnson killed him in Dream Master. That way we can ignore Dream Child and Freddy's dead. And of course, Wes Craven's new nightmare takes place in a fictionalized real world, so that doesn't count at all. Now as for where this takes place in the Friday the 13th series, Let's just ignore the Paramount movies, even though Jason Lives is the best, let's just ignore them for continuity's sake, because that whole timeline is fractured. Basically, it takes place after Jason goes to hell, when Freddy Krueger drags the mask into hell, and it takes place clearly before Jason X. So now that we have all that background set, the plot to this movie is about Freddy Krueger, who has lost his powers because the kids on Elm Street have forgotten about him. Thus, he can't scare them in their nightmare. So he needs to try to find a way to make the kids remember him, remember what fear tastes like. That way he can regain his powers and start killing the kids on Elm Street. So he searches through all of hell to try to find somebody who will do that for him, and he lands on Jason Voorhees. So taking the form of Jason's mother, Pamela Voorhees, Freddy manages to resurrect Jason back to life, and Jason is instructed to go to Elm Street and just kill a few kids and make them think that Freddy Krueger is the one who's doing it. But unfortunately for Freddy, most of these kids are a bunch of high schoolers who like to have sex, do drugs, drink even though they're not 21, and you know Jason doesn't really take kindly to all that. So Jason pretty much goes on a massacre to the point where it screws up Freddy's plans. And once our characters in the movie remember who Freddy is and they become very familiar with Jason, they try to get the two of them to fight each other to the death. And thus you have Freddy vs. Jason. So in 2015, I reviewed the original Nightmare on Elm Street. In 2016, I reviewed the original Friday the 13th. It wasn't until last year where I reviewed all the Friday sequels and the remake, and this year where I reviewed all the Nightmare sequels and its remake. But as far back as 2016, Freddy vs. Jason has been one of the movies that I have gotten the most requests to review. But much like with the Alien vs. Predator movies, I didn't really feel comfortable reviewing this until I have reviewed both franchises fully. And now that I've done that, I can move on to Freddy vs. Jason, which is a movie that I actually watched quite a bit on TV. Once I actually started getting into horror, it was around 2007-2008, Freddy vs. Jason was one of the first movies I watched, even before I watched the original Friday or Nightmare. And of course, being on TV, it was edited, it was censored, so you couldn't see all the hardcore violence or the nudity, or hear any cursing and this is actually the first time I have watched it uncut uh, with the violence with the sex and uh, back then I thought it was just an awesome corny slasher beat-em-up and I still feel that to this day Freddy vs. Jason is exactly what you expect it to be but in the best ways possible. Even though Wes Craven's new Nightmare was great, both series have certainly gone off the rails, especially with Friday the 13th, considering that Jason X just came out the previous year. And I feel like the best way you could possibly enjoy this movie is to go in with that mindset of, it's gonna be corny, it's gonna be trashy, you're not really gonna care about the characters in any way, all you want to see are these two iconic slashers of the 80s duking it out and beating the crap out of each other in the most brutal ways possible. And 
it damn well delivers. But if I could give this movie any credit beyond being schlocky, is that the actual plot of the movie where Freddy uses Jason to have the Elm Street kids remember him uh, and it gets too far out of hand so Freddy has to put Jason down, it's actually quite brilliant. This movie has been in production for decades, ever since the late 80s, once the Nightmare on Elm Street series was at its peak and Jason was resurrected as a zombie in Jason Lives. They've been trying to get this movie off the ground for a long time. Several other plot lines were used to try to pit these two against each other, but the plot that they actually landed on with this movie is pretty clever. And another great aspect about the movie is that it feels like it's a perfect blend of both franchises. Unlike something like the original King Kong vs. Godzilla, where that movie felt more like a Godzilla movie that happened to have Kong in it, this movie doesn't feel like a nightmare movie that has Jason in it, or a Friday movie that has Freddy in it. They utilize all aspects of both franchises very well. There's a lot of creepy dream sequences where Freddy stalks his victims and tortures them, and then there's senseless violence and nudity and Jason killing people in the most creative ways possible. The kills are a lot of fun, even though Jason racks up more bodies than Freddy, that kind of goes in line with the franchise, where Jason just has a higher body count than Freddy Krueger. And my favorite kill of the movie is probably tied with the Sub-Zero kill in Jason X, where these two characters are having sex. The boyfriend is such a complete douchebag. His girlfriend goes off to take a shower, but as he's grabbing a beer to drink, Jason just teleports into the room, stabs him repeatedly with the machete, and then once he's done stabbing the boyfriend, uh, he just stabs the machete into the floor, grabs both beds, and just squishes them up like a sandwich. Uh, I like to call this the douche sandwich. And not only is it a hilarious kill, but it's so creative uh, and fits perfectly well with Jason Voorhees. And once you get to the actual fight sequences between Freddy and Jason, they are brutal. These two are unforgiving when it comes to pumbling each other. There's a lot of bloodshed. It is just quite violent. And what I love is that the first fight takes place in the dream world, where Freddy Krueger clearly has the upper hand. Sure, it can get silly with some of the cartoonish sound effects, like when Freddy's doing karate moves on Jason Voorhees, or when he's playing Jason Voorhees like a pinball machine and you have all these cartoonish pinball sound effects. It gets bizarre, but again, it's a dream sequence, so I suppose it makes sense. That first fight in Jason's Nightmare is definitely more cartoonish, and once we get to the big finale in Crystal Lake, it's more brutal, it's more violent, and again, it feels like a perfect blend of both franchises. The characters are very one-note, but at this point, considering how you really don't care about a lot of the characters in Friday the 13th, and how the last two movies within Nightmare's continuity have had characters that you don't care about, you really don't care about the characters this time around. I mean, Lori is a passable final girl. She's likable enough to where you don't want to uh, see her die, and she gets probably the most story out of all the characters in this movie who are pretty much there to be meatbags. Like, they're only there to get killed, and uh, it works out. It's serviceable at the end of the day. I have clearly been giving a lot of praise towards Freddy vs. Jason, and considering the type of movie that it is, it's awesome. But it's got some things that I really don't like. One of the main aspects of the movie that kind of bothers me, honestly, has to do with Jason. And there's two aspects to Jason that just kind of don't work for me. The first is that Jason's afraid of water. That I don't get. Let, let's bring in the Friday continuity, if we possibly can. Jason Voorhees' background is that he drowned as a little boy in Crystal Lake, and his mother seeked vengeance on the camp counselors and whoever dared to reopen Crystal Lake. Then after his mother got beheaded, Jason Voorhees came back, pretty much slaughtered everyone in Crystal Lake, so, did he really die in Crystal Lake? We get that Freddy Krueger has been burned alive by the parents of the children on Elm Street, so that's why, as the movie puts it, his weakness is fire. But I kind of don't buy the fact that Jason's weakness is water. Because if you really want to do a deep analysis into the Friday the 13th series, which I don't know if you'd want to, there's no real evidence that Jason drowned in the lake. That just seems more like an urban legend than actual fact. And also, in all the movies, we've seen Jason walk around water, so he clearly does not have a fear of water. And then the other issue I have with Jason, this is more of a personal thing that I think a lot of horror fans will agree, 
Why didn't they bring back Kane Hodder? Kane Hodder is the most iconic actor to play Jason Voorhees, and he's the only one that can make Jason scary just by standing in place. I mean, no disrespect to Ken Kersinger, who I think does a fine job, and compared to Kane Hodder, his Jason is a lot more sympathetic. Maybe that's one of the reasons why Kane Hodder was replaced, because I guess they needed somebody to make Jason a little more sympathetic and not as angry as Kane Hodder's Jason usually is. And in that sense, it works because Jason Voorhees, out of all the iconic slasher villains, has always been the most sympathetic because he was picked on as a kid, he theoretically drowned in the lake, but it seems like all the people he kills are just either in his territory, and he seems to be going after the people that either get naked, have sex, do drugs, and drink while they're underage. He doesn't go after kids, so you could make an argument that he has his limits. While as Freddy Krueger is really a hardcore bastard. Again, he's a child murderer, and in this movie there are more hints than ever that Freddy Krueger may have been a child molester. But again, it wasn't until the awful remake where they say, yeah, Freddy molested kids. So if the end goal was to try to make Jason a little more sympathetic, then I guess they succeeded on that end. And to be honest, throughout this entire movie, I was on Team Jason. But to have Robert England play Freddy Krueger one last time, and to not have Kane Hodder play Jason Voorhees in this epic matchup, feels like a real wasted opportunity. Another big problem with the movie is that there is a lot of slow motion. Way too much. And I'm not talking about the typical Zack Snyder slow motion. No, I'm talking about that early to mid 2000s choppy slow motion that you'd see in movies like Peter Jackson's King Kong. Ronnie Yu is the director of this movie, and while overall he gives it a very great color palette, the movie is just so colorful all around, and it looks gorgeous sometimes. The use of that slow motion gets super obnoxious super fast, and you just want him to cut it out. And then the last personal issue I have with the movie, and maybe it's really not fair, but I kind of wish this movie was made in the 80s. Because like I talked about in my review for the Nightmare remake, the 2000s is often regarded as the worst decade of horror. I mean, this movie came out the same year as the remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But it just has that look that screams early 2000s. You've got grunge music, you've got douchebag characters, you've got fake breasts galore. Yes, that is something I'm going to point out because the Friday the 13th series kind of depends on female nudity. And I'm just going to stop talking about that aspect right there before it gets way too weird. People criticize the 80s a lot, but the early 2000s was kind of an ugly time for American culture. Uh, whatever, moving on, moving on. Uh, bottom line is, I wish that this movie was actually made in the 80s during one of the best decades of horror. And in fact, I can actually imagine how this movie is playing out if it were made in 1988 or 89, and I think it, I think it's a pretty awesome movie. But with the movie that we have right now, it's awesome in its own right. It's not perfect, and if you're a newcomer to slasher films, this might not do it for you. Um, but for anyone else, if you go into this knowing that it's schlocky, knowing that it's just gonna be insane and you just wanna see two icons of horror beat the crap out of each other, then it's worth seeing in your lifetime. Yeah, I'm gonna give it that rating. It's not high art. And again, there are a lot of problems with the movie that I acknowledge, but considering that you get what you paid for, it damn well delivers. And if I were to rank this movie among both franchises, this is my fourth favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie and my second favorite Friday the 13th movie. I think it's really right up there with one of the best of both franchises. And there you go, that's my review for Freddy vs. Jason. And with that, I have finally reviewed the entire Friday the 13th series and the entire Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. I wanna thank everyone who has requested me to review this movie. Thank you for your patience and I hope this review review satisfied you in the end. I also want to thank you guys for helping me get to 6,000 subscribers, another milestone for the channel. So awesome. I will be doing another video in the future talking about what I plan to do for 2022. I don't know if it's going to be pre-recorded or if it's going to be live, but I will keep you guys updated on what I'll be doing in the future. And also, my other channel, The Real Mr. Robinson's Outdoor Adventures, is almost at 100 subscribers. It actually made it to 100 subscribers, but then I lost 10 of them, so it's back to the low 90s. If you could go to that channel, 
like the videos there, subscribe to the channel itself, I would definitely appreciate that because I uploaded a couple of Halloween Horror Nights videos, including the main vlog, which I encourage you to check out. So again, thank you guys for your support throughout these years. Thank you to everyone who's requested me to review this particular movie. And again, thank you for your patience as I reviewed the previous movies in both franchises. I will tell you right now that for next year's series of Halloween reviews, I'm gonna go back to five random horror movies. I'm gonna take a break from reviewing entire horror franchises for the foreseeable future. But as of right now, I wanna know what you guys think about Freddy vs. Jason. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one. Hello everyone, I just wanted to say thank you all for watching my review for Freddy vs. Jason. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to get notifications. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, go check out my Twitch channel, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day, and happy Halloween!